uh, just dismissed OVW to Foster. Magnificent knock from Mark Taylor. Uh, the breakthrough, so badly needed by England after David Gower put Australia into bat, has been achieved on the second morning. And that's just landing in front of second slip, Graham Gooch. And just back to David Boone now. David, the difference in technique in batting over here on English pitches, such as this one at Headingley, which has a reputation, and back in Australia. I think it's uh, over here is far more imperative that you really watch the ball and uh, if you can get as far forward as, as you can to try and um, stop any deviation that there can be. Movement off the seam all the time. The one you got yesterday was a big leg cutter, which uh, might just about have uh, moved as much as uh, a leg spinner. <laughs> I don't think quite that much, Richie, but uh, you know, it was one of those things that uh, was moved just enough to take the outside edge a little bit more and might have played and missed. Do you reckon, we'll just come back to that in a moment, we'll watch Foster coming in. Just deep in wall once again. Well, there's a good over from Neil Foster. Just what was needed by England. They had to get the breakthrough. It's four for 273. We'll continue talking with David Boone. ...that this wicket will deteriorate. And uh, perhaps there have been signs today that it's just playing a few more tricks. We've seen two deliveries, one that I just talked about the last over that Steve Waugh got. And we saw also the one that hit Mark Taylor on the thumb. And that might suggest that there's just a little bit more lift in this track. The Australians won't worry too much if they uh, get between 350 and 400 and it deteriorates. It'll delight them. Not much success for the England bowlers thus far. Two wickets apiece for De Freitas and Foster. De Freitas slightly the more expensive, conceding 70 runs from his 26, and Neil Foster already threw 31 overs. Philip Newport won't look upon this performance with any great pride, 24 overs for 77 runs. Derek Pringle conceding just about three runs and over, 17 for 50. And we saw just two overs from Graham Gooch for six runs. And it's a nice shot to get off the mark. Steve Waugh using the short boundaries straight. And it's a good save there by Phil Newport. Three to Stephen Moore to get him off the mark. You can rest assured they won't be helpful ones. A bit of bounce there for Neil Foster. That one went through uh, just about, well, nose height. So he's really uh, charging in with Steve Moore at the crease. I guess Foster feels that another breakthrough now. And they're down, well, they, they've got Healy and then the bowlers. He would be feeling that they, they badly need a couple more wickets before lunch. Yes, they've given Steve War the type of welcome that most test batsmen would expect when they come to the crease. He's had to play nearly every delivery. A couple of short ones, a couple moving away off the seam. The rest of the Australian batsmen have got off very lightly. The England bowlers not bowling straight enough. The batsmen able to watch it go painlessly by. Ordinary looking England attack. That one bouncing just in front of Graham Gooch and it'll get away to the boundary rope for four. So an uncertain start for Steve Waugh against some good bowling by Neil Foster. And it looks as though this wicket will give the bowlers some help if you pitch the ball wicket to wicket. An edge falling well short of Gooch that's cracked him on the fingers. It's the first time that the England bowlers have had two right-handers to bowl at at the same time, so it's much easier for them to get their line right. 
Messrs Boone and Boycott talking about the very same thing. It's a good shot. That ball wasn't a half volley. The ball got it away very nicely. I think Foster, for one, really appreciates bowling to the two right-handers. I think it has made a big difference to him. He's certainly charging in. You, your point that you made about uh, a normal welcome for test batsmen, I couldn't agree with that uh, more, Bob. Um, Australia, three. In the last over, we saw the ball go through to Jack Russell from the bowling of Pringle. Nips back off the seam quite a bit. His head goes round straight away. May have indicated a little under underneath edge. Big appeal from the slips, but unfortunately, Russell dropped the ball. Australia four down here at Headingley. Two men LBW and two men court, which takes us to the uh, the Aquaglide Classic Catches competition. We'll uh, keep you warm during the winter if you get it right, and you're the lucky winner. No ball called there by umpire Holder. Two-year, 40,000-kilometre, no-cost warranty. You'll hear more about that from June the 19th onwards. And they'll get through for a leg by there. The consolation prizes in the Aquaglide Classic Catches competition in England. This is his first test match. Ward drives beautifully. That will be four. Straight down the ground. The perfect up drive. The Fatus over pitching and Steve War immediately onto the front foot. It's really just a, uh, a forearm jolt here from Steve War. Not a, a full follow through through the line of the ball. Probably just held up a little bit and he's given it the full face of the bat. Beautiful timing. Watched it magnificently. The race is down the ground for four. Steve War 17, Dean Jones 48. It's good delivery, a little extra bounce from Defratis, and that's the area where Steve War has a problem. So is Jack Russell, the wicketkeeper. Russell really has the fumbles this morning. That was a regulation take, and he's uh, having a bit of trouble there. Defratis. Um, Always just short of a good length, trying to get the ball to move off the seam as the wickets of Marsh and Alan Border. It's a good delivery. Packers come off it now, and he's appreciating that change to come down the hill here at Headingley. Beats him again. It's a very good over, testing Steve Ward just outside the line of the off stump. Chance with that little bit of extra seam over here that you can still get them past the bat pretty regularly. It's a good over. It's four for 308. I mean, obviously, you're pretty keen on, uh, you know, you're probably too old now to get out there and bat. Pretty keen on batting if this lot were bowling. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's, one all that's, round, that's the last uh, ball of that over, and the score now is four for 311. This time it's Stephen Moore facing Pringle. War on 17, Jones on 55, and it's interesting to note that Dean Jones is only his second first-class innings on the tour. Dean scored 248 against Warwickshire, included 12 sixes, so... After the injury at Worcester in the one-day game, he's come back in great touch. Wall beaten, good delivery from Pringle, the leg cutter. Steve Ward just having a little bit of trouble outside the off stump, and that one again moving markedly off the seam. Foster, Defratist and Pringle have had the ability this morning to move it off the seam, away from the right-handed batsman, and they are... Definitely appreciating not having a left-right-hand combination of English bowlers. Beats him again. And notice the low bounce there, and that's one advantage Australia will have if he can have to bat last. Terry Alderman. 
Right arm over the wicket, medium pacer. Ward whips that through square leg, a gem of a shot, beautifully played. Four runs. Steve Ward's timing the ball magnificently here this morning. He's had a little bit of trouble outside the off stump, but having no trouble at all on his pads. And although he looked a little off balance, he has timed that ball magnificently. Back foot coming around. Lovely follow through, and he's that through square leg for four runs. Australia really getting on with it, being aggressive and looking to build a massive total here. 112 runs in the session so far for the loss of one wicket. Mark Taylor for 136. That's the exact score that Neil Harvey made in 1948 on this ground. And uh, Steve Wall, the last of the recognised batsmen. Healy and then the bowlers to follow. So this is a vital partnership. And the good part about it is that the runs are coming quite quickly. It's the over bowled, four for 319. Batting is the running, scampering through for those singles. Robin Smith just a little bit on his heels there. Cover point. And Dean Jones realising that very quickly, getting through for a single. Now to third man for single. David Gower won the toss and elected to bowl. I'm not sure that David Gower is a warrior. I think he's got a lot of flair and he's a very professional cricketer, but certainly over the morning's play, it's Derry Pringle. The Australians have lost one wicket this morning. That of Mark Taylor. 36. And one of the features of the morning. I see Pringle come in. It was Mark Taylor's first century in test cricket. Derek Pringle to Steve Waugh. The only dismissal this morning was Mark Taylor. And LBW. Mark Taylor judged LBW. That must have been decided by umpire David Shepard as a ball that pitched in line with the stumps. Oh, shot. Beautifully played. Enormous strength there, Stephen Warren. See the same shot he played last over off Derek Pringle for four runs. He's done it again. Pringle going into, slipping into the leg stump line. Stephen Ward dispatching it magnificently through the onside, through square leg. Brings up the 50 partnership between Warren Jones of 67 balls. And the England bowlers so far in this match. De Freitas has two for 81. Foster two for 73. Newport no wicket for 77. And Pringle no wicket for 77. And this final over before the tea break. It's well played. A very aggressive shot by Stephen Moore. He's coming back for the second. So at lunch on the second day, Australia 4 for 327, Jones 56, Stephen Moore 28. We'll be back here in Headingley in 40 minutes. See you then. The England bowling figures, De Freitas, who's in action at the moment, 2 for 81 at the start of this over. Neil Foster, the other wicket taker, two for 73. Foster been the pick of the bowlers. Newport and Pringle, both wicketless. Newport, 24 overs to 77. Pringle, 23 for 79. Front just a little bit wide. Tremendous session, the session this morning for Australia. They scored 120 runs of 30 over. quite time that one but uh, he'll end up getting a single Gower the fieldsman there there's the Australians uh, all out on the balcony it's a little warmer today than it was yesterday 
and as a result um, they've come out and they look pretty relaxed out there why wouldn't they back to Headingley it's uh, four down for 331 and uh, that's Boone reading the paper there that headline you goofed Gower spread all across the back page of the paper read by Boone there I think he probably has goofed. I mean, if you win the toss and put the opposition in and they score over 300 with only four wickets down, Bob Willis, I reckon you've goofed. No ball call by umpire John Holder. Firm offside stroke. Under his high score, 91 against the West Indians. Is an against England um, defeated on 29 at the moment. Tremendous stroke make up. And I suppose all his relatives are sitting out there, as would Dean Jones' his relatives and friends down in Australia and all the rest. West Indians. No, he's. Um, I've certainly seen him wear a crash helmet. Um, I'm not really too sure what his philosophy is on it. He obviously feels pretty comfortable out here on this uh, pretty slow wicket against the medium paces. Very calm. And Steve Barwick of Glamorgan hitting Ian Botham. Forces that one away, just back with a square. No runs there. It's the end of the over. Four for three thirty. Still lane end to Steve War. He's played that shot well today. Three or four fours through that area. Steve War now moving along to uh, thirty-three. Australia four for three thirty-nine. One thing that did impress me about your innings, uh, Mark, was your concentration. What do you do there to keep your concentration going? Well, nothing in, you know, in particular, um, you know, I just uh, try and tell myself to play every ball on its merits, which I didn't do when the ball I got out on, so that was, uh, that was against my own theory there. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, was, I had to bat for, what, five hours, 17 minutes or something last night, and uh, I've done it before, so I kept telling myself, you know, I can, I can do it again, so, you know, I find it sometimes easy to do that when there's medium paces on all the time rather than to worry about spinners and that sort of thing. When, when the bowls are tend to be a bit the same, I find it a little bit easier to do that. I was also very impressed with your offside shots. Uh, we'll have a look at your batting graph, which will show uh, plenty of fours through the offside. Steve Wall looking for two and gets them very easily. Australia four for 341. Two drives and uh, still hit the one off the pads all right. So, you know, if I feel if I can do that, I'm going to score runs. Yes, see. The other thing about your innings that I thought stood out was the fact that you, you work out what you can do and what you can't do, and uh, you just stick to that rigidly. Um, yeah, well, I try to. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think I, I know I can't play every shot in the book, but I'm working on the ones I can't, and uh, you know, I just try to work, just try to use the strengths I've got and, uh, and compile my runs that way. So uh, that's all. It's worked this game, and hopefully it'll work the rest of the tour. Great shot there from Steve Waugh. Runs coming pretty quickly now for Australia. Steve War moving into the 40s. Australia really uh, moving along at uh, quite a good speed. Great shot. That's one of Steve War's favourites. What do you do uh, as a celebration for your first test ton? Well, actually, uh, my mother and father are still here, so I'll probably still go out with them tonight, I'd say. And uh, the uh, blokes from 4X have bought me a bottle of Moe, so we'll have to be having that in the change rooms after the game. So there'll be a a few drinks tonight, but uh, uh, I've got to play again tomorrow, so I can't give myself too, uh, too livid, I suppose. So it won't, be, it won't be that big tonight, but I might have a few drinks on Saturday night. Not a very auspicious piece of fielding at all. And England haven't looked too lively in the field today. I think they realised they missed the boat yesterday. They bowled indifferently. On the first day of the Test Series, the press are already starting to sharpen their knives. It's getting back to the partnership. 73 off 100 balls. A tremendous partnership. And really, Bob, there is nothing worse than one of those sharp knives if you're the captain of England, is there? Of this summer's Ashes Series. 
Australia have progressed to four for three, four, six. Four for 350. Onto the back foot goes the right-handed Stephen Waugh, looking very solid in defence. The Australian 350 came up in 709 deliveries. The only Yorkshireman really in contention this season is Paul Jarvis, the seam bowler. Taylor for 136, Border made his contribution for 66 and now these two. Really not the place to bowl to Stephen Ward, just outside off stump and just short of a length. Every now and again, if it's a little close and bounces, he can nick it. One's whipped away down to fine legs. It's become a bit of a trademark of Alan Borders, hasn't it, Bob? He's uh, either got the 4X out on or the can. And uh, that is indeed the end of the over. We'll come back to that in a moment. Four for 3.55. Australian viewers, Michael Proctor, who played in World Series cricket, a great all-rounder. He's um, in Leeds to watch this test match, and he's talking with Ian Chapman. Thanks very much, uh, Tony Gregg. Yes, I first played against Mike Proctor back in 66, I think, he made your debut in the third test at uh, Kingsmead in Durban, if I remember rightly. Yeah, the third third test in Durban, quite correct, Pelly. Uh, the first two, I was 12th man, and I managed to get a game in the third. That's right. Yeah. What brings you over this way? Well, surprisingly, I actually got an invitation from the Gloucestershire Constabulary <laughs> to play in a uh, 150th anniversary celebration of theirs uh, for the Chief Constable's 11 against Gloucester. So uh, we played that last Sunday, which was great fun. Actually, you played, uh, what, 10 years with Gloucester? You must, you must have gone close to 10. No, it was a bit more than that. I first came over in 65, actually, and played against South Africa. That was my first first-class game for Gloucestershire. Uh, I then came over full-time from 1968, and I finished in 1982. So it was a good 14, 15 years. You uh, made an interesting comment uh, to me. You, you said you, this didn't look like a four for 350 wicket. As uh, Pringle bowls to Steve Waugh. In fact, it's four for 355 now. Um, you reckon the Australians are working themselves into a pretty good position? Yeah, I think so. I, th you know, I, was, I was a little bit surprised as well at that Gower won the toss and elected to, to field. Uh, and I think the guys, particularly Mark Taylor, played, a, played a, one hell of a good knock. You know, he had to guts it out there. And uh, they, they're in a great position. Um, it's a bit of an unpredictable wicket. There's a bit of uneven bounce. The ball has uh, seamed around a bit. I don't think the England bowlers have bowled particularly well, but, you know, I think they've, they're in a great position. You played many years of county cricket. What's the secret to, to bowling in England? What do you think Australia's got to do when it comes to their turn to bowl? Well, I think, you know, in, in England, particularly on a wicket that does a little bit, the, ba the basics normally apply, and I think you've just got to continue bowling a line in length. And on a wicket like that, if you continue to do that, uh, you can get the ball to the ball will move around, it'll be a, bit, be a bit uneven. And I think Australia have the bowlers that, that can do that. I think particularly Terry Alderman, you know, I've seen him bowl quite often. And if he sticks to his line and length, uh, I think he'll be successful. Did you uh, get the opportunity to see much of Phil Newport? I mean, you might have sort of uh, seen a bit of similarity in his action with yours. He's not quite a wrong footer, but he's sort of a bloke who bowls from here and yet he can make him go out, a bit like you. I couldn't make them go out too much, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, he used to make them go away off the seam, at least. A little bit. Yeah, he's, he's got a similar action. Uh, he didn't bowl particularly well. Mm. Uh, he, he went through stages where the ball was spraying around a bit. And funnily enough, as we were talking about earlier, he, he probably bowled better with, a, with an older ball than a newer ball. That's a good over from Derek Pringle. Australia 4 for 3.55. Of all the players. Yeah. And you enjoy that? Uh, not, not so much, actually, funnily yeah. enough, Chapilli, because we didn't have a very good season. You know, we had one of those seasons where we had tremendous amount of injuries. In fact, we had four different captains purely because of, of injuries. So next season, I'll enjoy it. Though. You might have an Australian out there captaining, they tell me. Yeah, Kim's coming out. Yeah. Uh, he's coming out to, to captain Natal. And, you know, he seems highly motivated. He's, he's really keen to, to do a good job as captain and, and to make uh, a lot of runs. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him out there. Four for 356. Steve Waugh picking up a quick single. It's four for 357. 
Well, Procky, it's good to see you. It's, uh, it's probably better seeing you not from 22 yards, but good to see you. Good to see you uh, looking well. And then uh, we might even get in a cold one later on in the day. I'm sure we'll do that, Billy. But it's, it's great to see you going. I haven't seen you for a while. And Greggy and the rest of the guys, it's super to be here. Thanks very much. Thanks for talking with us, Mike. Pro Some wonderful players throughout the 70s. And uh, I remember playing against them in 1964 at home, South Africa. We drew that series. They beat us in 1967 when you were there, 2-1. And they thrashed us 4-0 in 1970. So their record against Australia was excellent. Derek Pringle to Steve Waugh. I suppose the good thing was at least Greggy wasn't playing for South Africa. It would have been worse if uh, they'd beaten us 4-0. With... In fact, they wouldn't have beaten us 4-0 if Greggy had been playing. It probably would have been 2 all. You can imagine the quotes, could you, Australia grovelling in South Africa. It would have been wonderful. But back here, it really is a great partnership. This has taken the score from 273 to 363. And as you point out, Ian, the stroke play by both these men has been superb. Warren Jones batting beautifully. Great shot. That takes him to one short of the half century. And this has been a good innings from Steve Waugh because he's been beaten a few times. He got a he got a torrid time from Neil Foster when he was starting out. So we watched that favourite shot of his, that back foot drive. But every time the bowlers have made a mistake, he's put them away. He's going to be like Ian Botham. He's going to enjoy the lack of bounce on English wickets and play square the wicket. He plays superbly. There's the 50. What a great way to bring it up. This is 450 against England, eight fours in the 53 for Steve Waugh. But you've, uh, I guess, got to hang on to your catches at any time in Test cricket. And Richie Benno has some thoughts on that matter. Easy one. Now here's Phil Newport. And Kim Barnett is the man out there at point. Just, uh, went a little bit too far with the dive. He just about have stayed on his feet. Well, that is of vital importance, not just to England, but to any team. And the Australians must hold their catches too. Oh, that's a glorious stroke. He's played some of those today that I'll swear to my dying day and no more than defensive pushes. Absolutely magnificent, Stephen Waugh. Didn't need a follow through. It's 375 on the board now for Australia. Four wickets down. War is 57 and Jones 73. Once again, it's Philip Newport. And he's done him again. Once beautifully away on the offside and the next ball through mid wicket. That is great stuff, and it's exactly what Australia need. Just going back to the catching for a moment, this partnership is vitally important, but when the Australians get out there to bowl, they must hang on to their catches, and that's the point I've been making for some considerable time over here in England, that this is quite a good bowling side Australia can put in the field, but it's not one of the greatest ever. What they must do is back up their bowlers with brilliant ground fielding and with good catching, which is more than we've seen so far from England. A slower ball, and just a single this time to Stephen War. There is another aspect about um, what's going on out there at the moment. Well, that is great stuff. The most super shot. Well, two points. One about the catching that the Australians uh, must keep up when they get in the field, and the other one that uh, the ball still has been beating the bat quite a bit and I think that'll be important. I still think there's plenty in this pitch Ian for the Australians when they get out there. Now, thanks there to Richie Benno and uh, what a marvellous innings we're seeing here from Steve Wall Hughes and Graham Yallop who put that partnership together in 1981 Uh, they are on 111 at the moment, so they're just about to go past that uh, record partnership here at Headingley, Australia v England. And the stroke play has been absolutely superb. Both Stephen Waugh and Dean Jones have played all the shots, but Waugh's timing is such that the ball just goes like a rocket to the fence. And this Yorkshire crowd really appreciating this short but brilliant innings. 
If you're going to keep bowling short outside off stump, you'll do a lot more damage. As I said earlier, that uh, on English wickets, Ian Botham plays beautifully off the back foot. As we see Robin Smith, he'll be a key batsman for England in the pitch at the moment. But when touring in Australia, I always felt that Botham was a chance with the ball bouncing extra. And Steve Waugh has fallen once or twice in his career at home with the ball that rears just outside the line of the off stump. But here in England, it'll stay down. He will certainly play that square drive to perfection, as we've seen already so far in this innings. David Gower would be uh, thinking at the moment about how to stop this run flow. I suppose from the Australian point of view, the thoughts running through Alan Border's mind would be, number one, that he's enjoying this, seeing uh, the Englishman getting belted around after having taken uh, two beatings from the Englishman in 85 and then again in 86, 87 in Australia. I would think that uh, he would be letting Steve Waugh have his head, keep this partnership going. And I reckon I'd let it run its course, this partnership, and then I reckon I'd be thinking about getting out of there and uh, giving the Australians a bowl, because I don't reckon with this attack the wise thing would be to be looking at a really big score and then make the Englishman follow on. I think that's a terribly hard way to win a test match, and in fact, I basically discount it as a method of winning a test match. I reckon you're much better off to be bowling fourth. And I reckon uh, Border should let this partnership run its course as it has taken the score to four for 384. Well, it's a bit like being on the merry-go-round at the moment for David Gow. You've just got four bowlers and you keep shunting them round and round. Runs and Don Bradman. But that's a great shot. Two bounces and across the rope. So that's a nice welcome for Neil Foster. Well, you'll never see Steve Waugh at better than this. It's a gem of an innings. It's what the Australians need. It's what his captain needs. He's not holding back. He's giving it full bore. And he's playing some delightful strokes. He really laid into that. It was a bad ball. He hit over the top, didn't try and keep it down. Bounced over the rope. Third man had no chance. And Waugh now on 70, only five runs behind Dean Jones. And Steve Waugh really uh, running things out there in the middle at the moment. Dean Jones hesitated and he said, come on. So Waugh has really taken control of the game at the moment. All shapes and sizes, the highest order. Waugh's looking for two, but he slips. Not some of your uh, pigeons uh, coming to see you. Bring a message, fan, are they? My pigeons, you wouldn't have seen them. They'd gone across that quickly. Short sighted. Got, uh, the big chess men there. And that was in the city square. They were playing uh, that game of chess. And uh, I tell you what, they've got intelligent pigeons over here, uh, Fanner. They, they play chess. Well, he actually looks like David Gow to me. Not too happy at the moment, that one. Tell you what, he's not short on a feed. You don't think he'd be doing too much flying, that one. He's, uh, I think he's grounded at the moment. Great shot. He's given the ball a fearful hammering in that area. Well, when you look at this innings, you, you, you think of Doug Walters, Gar Garfield Sobers, Norman O'Neill, the great back foot players who really get back and put it away, right back and across, over the top of the ball, and that's a gem of a shot. Superb batting by Stephen Waugh. He's now level with Dean Jones on 76, and we're going to see a man placed at point on the fence. This partnership building up very nicely now. 124, and I tell you what, Bill, this not only is it good in the context of this game, and obviously Australia now having got England down, they need to hammer home the advantage and win the game, but I'm just starting to wonder now what's going to happen in the, in the British press as far as David Gower is concerned. If they take a beating after he sent the opposition in, they're not noted for being particularly patient with their captains over here. Well, Godfrey Evans uh, set Australia 3-1 for this match. I wonder what the 
prices now. I mean, they're, they're playing superbly. Oh, no, David Gow's going to cop it as he picks him off through mid-wicket. Newport buying with a lack of experience here, and they're going to take three. That's excellent running. Really is top stuff from Stephen Moore and Dean Jones. This crowd warming to this partnership. 400 up for four. What a wonderful start to the series by the, the Australian batsman. last 50 has come off just 60 balls so the Australians really starting to dominate the game very good back foot player and he's on 79 and in fact Steve Waugh is now level with his highest score against England he got a 79 not out against them at the Adelaide Oval it's over the top that's four more one bounce down to third man and his highest score against England for Stephen Moore. He's on 83. Magnificent innings this from Stephen Moore, and it's the way to play a square cut. Although that was a top edge, they would have been struggling to catch it if it did go to hand. The Australians have just been offered the light by the umpires, the dark darkening Yorkshire skies but Stephen Moore and Dean Jones happy to stay out there they've got a cause in mind to win a test match for Australia they won't win it from the dressing room they're going to stay out there and make sure the Englishmen know they've got a lot of runs to chase Newport Stephen Moore looking good in defence as well the problem is if it gets really dark they won't get another opportunity but the point at also is that Australia have really got enough runs, four for 405. The only problem for Alan Border today is when to declare. That's the only problem that confronts him, whereas David Gower has only picked up the one wicket today. It was three for 207 at the close of play yesterday. It's now four for 405. Very nice problem to have, Bill. I'm, I'm sure you've you've had that problem in your captaincy career. That sitting up there, the side four for 405, just uh, trying to pick the right time mentally and physically when to start bowling at England when they're maybe at their weakest, or at their most down. Well, it's so important to try and get one up in any series, but certainly this one. Well struck to mid-off, they're through for single broad fumbles, safely home. The wheels falling off for England, but after both teams getting a thrashing by the West Indies, this was a, a testing match for both sides, and so far, Australia, with all the aces, after Gower elected to bowl. It's the end of the over. So Foster has 76 wickets in Test cricket, an average of 31. He's best eight for 107. He's 78, including this match now. That was before the start of this match. So he's got 78 Test wickets. He's worked hard here in this match. He's been the best of the bowlers. Fine shot. A couple more. And Foster versus Australia. His best bowling was two for 27, so he hasn't had a great record against Australia. Only in his third test match. He's averaged 43.8. Not great against Australia, but certainly a long way to go, only playing his third test match against the old enemy. Bouncer, War 86, Jones 79, 4 for 411. Batsman out today, Mark Taylor for 136.
is uh, definitely a little bit darker here at the moment as of the non-paying members of the Yorkshire County Cricket Club up on the wall. Let me look over, but I don't think they're going to go any further. That barbed wire will probably have a little bit to do with that. And also that gentleman walking across screen with a high hat. Another bouncer. It's the All of them will be hoping that Stephen Wall can bring up his first Test 100 because it's been a gem of a knock. Nice deflection. Down to Newport, just the sink. 87, the Devils number. Pretty good delivery, that one. That one seeming back from off to leg. Just the one slip in now for Steve Waugh, such as this inning's been. They haven't been able to stop the run flow. There's a third man fine. There's a point on the fence. Oh, great shot. The sweeper there. He won't get it. What a shot. Barnett, with 10 metres to move, couldn't cut that square drive off. A gem. Third shot from Stephen Waugh. David Gower trying to eliminate his four scoring ability through the point area. Stephen being aware of that, just decides to hit it in front of point and gave the sweeper no chance of getting anywhere near that. Right in the middle of the bat, four runs all the way. His highest score in test cricket with his 91 at Perth. It's a bit of bat pad to that one. Well, for, the, for Stephen Waugh, there's a man there at point on the fence, a man at third man fine on the fence, and just the one slip, a ring of three, a backward point cover and a mid-off on the offside, a mid-on square leg and a deep fine leg on the onside. So the attackers to the offside, and Stephen Moore's made them pay dearly for the short pitch deliveries. Newport. War having a good hard look. Be a little bit nervous, Stephen Moore. The first test hundred is always your hardest. Still being very watchful, Stephen Moore. That ball just moving away a little bit, but starting very wide. Newport starting that far too wide. And War, although he's 91, he's on the move. He's scored a lot of boundaries. Still. Very, very watchful and, and looking an odds on bet to score that elusive first test century for Australia, which I'm sure would be a great relief to Stephen. He's in his 27th test match, Stephen Waugh. That's the over bowl. He's on 91. What an innings this is by Stephen Waugh. 91 not out. Chanceless so far, into the nervous 90s and heading towards a test century against England. The stumps direct. Five for 420. Well, he's blazed that one through extra cover. It's running down towards the boundary. What fielder down there by a finite. And a good throw back to applause not only from the crowd but also from his teammates he still wouldn't have forgotten the drop chance he uh, let Jones off the hook that's another angle of the cover drive good piece of fielding from Barnett the 90s not looking too nervous for Stephen Waugh So that 94 represents Stephen Waugh's highest score in Test Match Cricket. Won't be uh, on his mind too much. He'll be thinking about 100. And I tell you what, if he gets 100, it'll be remembered for a long time. He's played some superb shots. He's a magnificent stroke maker. So that runs through the gap as well. Probably settle for one, so that takes him on to 95. Stephen Moore has only been in 141 minutes. This is 
the pace of a one-day innings. He really has destroyed this England attack. Listen, for those of you who relate to balls, 112 balls for his 95. Fantastic. 15 fours in the inning so far. This is Foster. And a watchful, very watchful war pushing forward. Foster represents, I suppose, the most dangerous of the English bowlers. He's probably the quickest of them. Makes the ball leave the bat quite a lot. But there's only one slip there now. Gower really has spread his men out. T is uh, due to be taken in approximately 21 and a half minutes time, 22 minutes perhaps. And that's the story. War undefeated on 95, Healy with him on three. And the runs per over on the board there, 3.13 for Test cricket, very swift indeed. Oh, and that was very close. A little inside edge, it kept low and went past the off stump and wouldn't that have been disappointing for him. Steve War can afford himself a wry smile here. The ball keeping low, could have easily shot off the inside edge and shattered the stumps. But one or two England batsmen will be looking at that ball keeping low and not being so happy. They're looking down the barrel at a score of 500 plus here. They may have to get 300 to avoid the follow on. This is a good over. I think that Foster realizes that uh, War is now going to be just a little bit careful, waiting for the half volley. We'll keep it just short of a length to him. He really has blazed away on the offside. Anything short and doesn't have to be too short either. He's got onto that back foot and hit it through the extra cover superbly. No problems getting underneath that one. More effort from Foster brings a little bit extra out of a bowler and a batsman gets close to a 50 or a 100. Really putting everything into it now, Foster. But Steve Waugh can let that one go harmlessly over his shoulder. That's well bowled. Tidy over that from Foster. The score remains on five. They've just picked up two wickets in those 50 overs. Mark Taylor and Dean Jones. Steve War on strike on 95. A short and uh, oh, Gower very nearly deflected that one past Pringle at mid off. No run, it's the end of the over. Five down for 432. The man of the day yesterday, but. Even his effort eclipsed by Stephen Waugh. Well, the keeper right up over the stumps. Trying to put a little bit of extra pressure on Waugh. Jack Russell is the England wig keeper. It's a bit like I'm not actually. Wears a white floppy hat. Has black gloves. Short little pads. Very watchful war. It's the end of the over. Five down to 433. Downing a catch of Dean Jones. War looks pretty composed. Bit of gardening. Make the bowler wait. Here he comes. Oh, he's got that away. It's going down towards the boundary. It'll get there. Yes, it will. Into the fence it goes. So Stephen Waugh now moves on to 99. Just one run short of his maiden test century. And hasn't he played superbly? One of the few false shots we've seen from War. <coughs> Thick outside edge and nothing going round for poor David Gower. He takes the slips away and through it goes. Graham Gooch telling the fielders to stop one. Be a bit more 
effort from the bowler. Steve War on 99. Get ready, Mr. Healy, for the quick single. Well, I don't think um, he's going to do anything silly here. He'll wait for a half volley or a short delivery. Perhaps nudge it down to third man. One way or the other, this is a great occasion for this young man. He's played some superb shots in this innings, and indeed he's played some great knocks in his time. He's a tremendous all-rounder, very valuable member of this Australian side. On 99 now. Newport the bowler. He's got it. Beautifully played, Stephen Waugh. That is a tremendous innings, and I think that he recognises it too. He's not one to get too emotional. And have a look at those Aussie teammates of his. They realise that this has been one of the great hands. Tremendous knock. The Aussies are up in the stands, waving their flags. And the Yorkshiremen, including Bobby Simpson and... Jeff Lawson up there, and isn't he a happy-looking fella? What an innings, Bob Willis. A really great knock from Steve War. His century coming up in just 124 deliveries. 16 boundary fours, and only been at the wicket for 158 minutes. We saw a determined foundation-laying century yesterday from Mark Taylor. Today we've been entertained to a great test match hundred the bowling might not have been the best in the world but he's absolutely murdered it yes i think uh, that 124 balls tells the story that is the 16th occasion in which an australian has scored a test match century here at headingley Number 15 was Mark Taylor earlier today, and Stephen War number 16. And as the bowler ran in there, you could see him talking to himself, saying they don't go and do anything silly. So often, after batsmen record a century, they then perhaps relax a little bit and get out. Clearly, Stephen War and the Aussies would like to kick on to 600, having nothing to do with that wide delivery. Let's just have a look at um, Stephen War's shots. Brown Grease galore. 16 in all. Played very well square of the wicket. Lots of his runs coming square. It's a very optimistic appeal. It's an element of desperadery in that. Steve War, very, very strong, square of the wicket on the offside. He's had a lot of opportunity to play that stroke. Gower had to put a man back on the extra cover boundary for him. He played himself in for four or five overs and then set this heading league ground alight. One of the great test match innings. The speed of it, absolutely breathtaking. Yes, he'll remember that for the rest of his life, that's for sure. I'll tell you what, Gooch is bowling pretty well too for a part-timer. That's the end of his over. It's five down for 439. It's going, uh, it's in fact six for 441. Stephen War is having a cup of tea. He's 100 not out. Healy is out. So 442 Australia now at Headingley, six for 442. The entries will close for the uh, Aquaglide Classic catches on the Friday 8th of September and the winners will be announced Saturday 16th of September. So Phil Newport is coming in from the Kirkstall Lane end. He's bowling to Steve Waugh. Magnificent century, just 124 balls it took Steve Waugh to post his first ever test century. And what a happy man he was. 
and the Australians extremely well placed. A wonderful performance also by Mark Taylor, 136. Excellent support by Alan Border and Dean Jones at 138 run partnership between Jones and Stephen Moore. You couldn't see a better one than that considering the conditions. It was dull and overcast. It's a very cool day here at Headingley, but they played all the strokes. It's really test cricket at its best, and that's really set up this game for Australia at 6 for 442 on the second day. War 100, Hughes 1. It's now Mervyn Hughes facing up to the medium pace bowl. Newport. The first cat. Botham caught Boone, bowl awesome. Catch 1. Back live. The second catch was taken by Philip De Freitas. Part of the great action during the three one-day internationals back live here at Leeds. Crunch, there he goes again. Barnett trying hard, dives, doesn't get it. Steve, in fact, he does get it. Mag magical save. Two runs to Stephen Moore. Great effort by Kim Barnett in the deep. Another one of those classical square cuts from Stephen Moore and Kim Barnett. Making a little ground, just getting there inside of the rope. An early dive, well controlled, good return. Two runs to Stephen War. That's a quick single. Back to the classic catwalk. The next about's going to be four more. A little bit of luck there for War. Only the one slip in. War on to 107. The runs coming on for Australia at a great rate of knots. The dejected Englishman and Steve Ward just getting that down wide of first slip through about the second slip region. It's really helping us on, it, on its way. Phil Newport down here at third man. A bit leg weary, couldn't cut it off. Four runs. The next classic catch was taken by Mike Valletta. It's gone. Well caught. Mike Valletta takes a general catch. Driving at Tom Moody. Gale falls to the substitute wicketkeeper. A fine take in the first wicket is down with 123 on the board. A very good catch. A good catch for, for a top class wicketkeeper. Never mind. Stephen Moore pushes forward and catches it. Back live, Stephen Moore working the ball down to third man for two. The Aqua Glide Classic Catch Competition for 1989. Keep a list, try them, get it in the same order as the Channel 9 commentary team. I'm sure there'll be plenty more catches added throughout the Test Series. But here at Leeds, Australia marching on. Six for 457. Stephen Moore, 109. Mervyn Hughes on seven. Gooch. Yorkshiremen love their cricket. They've really seen some classic batting today by Taylor, Jones, and particularly Stephen War. Magnificent ovation for the young right hand batsman as he crashes that down to Newport, just the single. The overbold, six for four, five, eight. Work. War beats him outside the line of the off stump. We're just getting that ball to straighten just a little bit on Stephen War. Sloping in and just straightened a touch. Didn't carry through to Jack Richards either. So, indication that this wicket is wearing a little bit already. Jack Richards taking it on the half volley. A happy sight. I think for the Australian bowlers, although not as positive as they would like, an uneven bounce will help. Straight driven, a single, the bowling figures for England. Newport, two for 134. Foster, two for 86. De Freitas, two for 100. Pringle, no wicket for 108. And Gooch, who's bowled reasonably well with his seamers, Six overs, one made, no wicket for 20. And Foster would have to be the pick of the bowlers so far. But this game so far dominated by the batsman. It's great. War tied down. 
That's the over bowled. Six for 467. Headingley, Stephen Moore, 111. Mervyn Hughes, 15. Just glancing across to the right, I can see a flock of pigeons working in the afternoon sunlight way to the west. As Foster prepares to come in from the football stand end to bowl to Stephen Moore. Well, there was a big shout against Mervyn Hughes in that last over. The bowl was Pringle. And umpire John Holder had a good hard look. And a judge not out. Merv just wandering across his stumps here. I say very close. John Holder would have, had, would have had to have had a very good look about, look at it. Deciding to go the right way and Bill, there's a pigeon on the pitch. Yes, the old red checkers come out for his supper here. A bit of seed. Always a good sign when the red checker comes out. You can see the band on his ring. That's his race ring, the blue ring on the right foot. The band on his leg there. Getting a little bit excited. It's just like been home. A red checker, Cockbird, that one. As Gower does the fielding. He goes for that one as a thick outside edge. Down to third man. They'll come back for the second. Steve Waugh's run brilliantly here today. He's a fine athlete. And showing us today that he's going to be a great test batsman. Batting at number six. His first test hundred, he's moved to 113. Certainly has in the highlight of just those two runs there. He's running as hard when he's 113 when he was when he was naught. And he's not relenting at all to give the English bowlers a chance. And he's making sure they've really got something to bowl at. They can keep it a lot of pressure on the Englishman early. Um, Australia set up here for a, a great chance of a win. Just to whip that away on the onside as a character in the crowd yells out, give the pigeon a bowl. Coming for its afternoon supper, some grass seed. It's just wandering between. It's coming to a short cover into a catching position now. Stephen Moore on strike. And Moore very watchful. Not giving him as much width since the tea break. Pigeon would have to just watch itself a little bit. It's moving quite slowly and unwarily. It, it could become pigeon pie for someone this evening. Uh, looks like it's a very well fed one at the moment. Umpire David Shepherd shows his athletic ability by chasing it around the field. Uh, and it moves 10 feet. It's got David Shepherd well covered, that red checker. I can tell you that he's coming back in for some more seed. Nice deflection down to third man. It's the over bowled. Six for 470. 114. Pushes down to mid on for a single. A change in the commentary team. It's now Jeffrey Boycott. There are many great names. Two names have been added to the list today. Mark Taylor got 136 earlier on in the day. That made him ninth on the list of Australians as far as uh, numerically concerned. And now we have uh, Stephen Moore moving to 115, which puts him level with Charlie McCartney, who was a magnificent player, the Governor-General. He scored 115 here in 1921. So Steve Waugh now slips ahead of him, and he's coming up to Andrew Hilditch, who got 119 here in 1981. Great shot off the back foot again from Stephen Moore. I can understand that they wouldn't be bored, uh, Jeffrey, because they've had a day, uh, great days of batting here. So they took the normal soil off and put something else down in a different type of grass seed. And what happened is we had some funny sort of grass growths, so a crazy paving. We had cracks in the pitch where you get cracks in the pitch abroad in Australia, South Africa, West Indies, and it doesn't seem to. To, to, to bother them, they, they still turn out to be good batting surfaces, but in England when pitches start cracking, they're not very good surfaces to play cricket on and we've had some very, very poor surfaces until this last 12 months 
In fact, if you'd have seen some of the test match pitches we've had in the last decade, they were like crazy paving, where there was grass in the centre, little patches of grass, and around it was bare earth with cracks around. And it just looked as if it was concrete that had dried too, qu too quickly. So when it hit the grassy pe pieces, the ball bounced high, and when it hit the dry area, it just kept flowing, so you got this indifferent bounce. Balcony here at Headingley surveying the scene and I would think that he would have a declaration in mind pretty soon well I hope he has Wars looking for two but it's not there the light is certainly good enough to think about a declaration as Derek Pringle continues Four, now moving into the 120s. I notice uh, that to Graham Gooch is running from uh, his position that slipped there to the other end in between overs just to keep loose in case there is a declaration. Well, this is the time as an opening batsman where you can't be sure when Alan Board is going to declare, so you've got to assume he's going to declare any time, any minute, any over, and you've got to get yourself mentally prepared that you're going to bat in 10 minutes' time. And also, what you want to do is start swinging your arms, uh, getting your legs uh, moving, running between wickets. Just get yourself really loosened up physically and mentally saying, right, 10 minutes' time, it could be the first ball of my innings. So I want to be absolutely ready. He certainly doesn't want to be bowling at this minute. I mean, the last thing he wants is for uh, David Gower to say, come and have a couple of overs when he's just getting himself mentally prepared to bat. He's hit that shot well today. It's an indication of how well he hit it. Kim Barnett only had to go about 10 metres to his left and he was flat out stopping it. Yes, yeah, this is a fine shot. This is the timing, the rhythm of it. He's just hit that rather crispy, but the lovely flowing movement. I think what Australia need to do, following on from your point, Ian, is that in the next 20 minutes or so, just run England round a little bit ragged if, at the best advantage. Almost every ball looking for a run. It's not how many fours. You actually want to get all the fielders a little irritable running round. Just like that. They tell me that, uh, and, and not that I ever saw him play, but Sir Donald used to start to do the roundup. He used to uh, do them one at a time. He'd pick out point and then he'd work around a cover and mid off and uh, just give them all a little bit of a run around, uh, I guess, in a similar sort of situation. 22 to Merv Hughes, 124 to Stephen War. The two batsmen have just had a bit of a chat. I'm sure they'll have a pretty fair idea what uh, Alan Border has in mind in this exercise. Bit of a mix up there uh, between War and Hughes. Talking about this being an old style Headingley wicket, uh, Geoffrey, what does it do over the five days? Deteriorate much? No, it doesn't actually. That's why it was a really good test match pitch and uh, it didn't deteriorate a lot, but somehow we've always had quite a lot of results at Headingley. The bowlers have managed to keep being able to seam it a little bit. I mean, ideally, we'd have liked the pitch to turn. I mean, so we get the spinners in the game, but that's not necessarily, that's not really been the nature of... Robin Smith is at deep point. If you remember... In to Australia well and truly on top here at Headingley. That's well run. Two takes the score along to 490. 
And seeing Australia well and truly on top takes us back to the old days, the good old days as far as Australians were concerned, when they used to be on top. Days when Dennis Lilly used to be uh, bouncing around Tony Gregg's ears. At the moment, Tony Gregg has the microphone. He has the opportunity to bowl a few bounces at his old mate, Dennis Lilly. Thank you, Ian. Good old days for you, maybe. Not so much for me, but great to see you, Dennis. It's lovely to chat to somebody, actually, who's uh, got about as little hair as I have. Just let's have a look at this shot. But you, you, you're hanging on to a bit better than I am, perhaps. Well, people say we go to the same hairdresser, Greggy, but I'm not <laughs> quite sure. I think uh, yours is pulling more out than mine is. <laughs> but only just. Right. This uh, Aussie performance has been tremendous, hasn't it? You've watched the last two days. Yeah, it's been a great, solid performance by the batting, uh, batting side Australia. And... Um, the great thing about it is that I still feel sure that the bowlers in the Australian side feel there's enough happening out there. Nice tidy shot. To uh, keep their interest up. And uh, if I can be critical of the England bowlers, and I'm going to be, that is I feel that they've bowled a consistent line and length, and that is usually their bread and butter. And I think that the Australians will certainly learn a lot from that. And if they can bowl a good line and length out there, there's enough happening every now and again just to keep the interest up. Do you think there's enough talent in this Australian bowling lineup to bowl them out twice? Oh, most certainly, yeah. I mean, it's a, a, a bowling lineup that's going to be very consistent, and that's what is going to be required out there. Who do you think the danger man is going to be? We'll have a look at, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. This is uh, Pringle. Alderman, obviously, is one of those characters who's never going to let them down, and he may get some movement out there. You can't go past Terry Alderman. Obviously, he's a man who's had a, so much experience in English conditions and been very successful over a long period of time. Um, Terry, uh, Terry's going to obviously be the danger man, but the rest of the side, including Lawson, who's bowled here before, are going to you know, really make sure the Englishmen have to be on their mettle. Straight to go, they had extra cover. And Hughes with a bit of wind up his back and uh, the crowd a bit behind him uh, might make a difference. And of course Campbell's unknown, an unknown quantity in test cricket. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he bowls that good line length I'm talking about, that he has a lot of success out there. Well, let's uh, get back to Pringle. This is uh, just the last ball of this over. Straight to the field. I think uh, Merv was similarly bemused. Great shot. Plays the cut shot extremely well, Steve Waugh. That brings up the 500. has come off 949 balls. Certainly pushed the first few deliveries through. Kim Barnett. Looked like that one might have been the toppy there to uh, Steve War, the top spinner. Well, this is really a dreadful time to be making your first entrance into test cricket bowling. He's only a fill-in bowler. He bowls occasionally for Derbyshire, but he doesn't really bowl many overs. He's been quite tidy so far, apart from that uh, short one outside off stump. He's lobbed them quite well, just warming up his fingers there. That's quite a tidy over there from Kim Barnett. It's six for 500. Gives with that friendly, uh, Jeffrey. We have a lot of breweries in Yorkshire, you know. It's the water. <laughs> it's well run because uh, Robin Smith wasn't too deep there at mid-off. 5.04. Arthur Clues there uh, giving his views on matters there on the balcony. Blues played with uh, Leeds rugby league team here, and that's the uh, 
We talk about the football stand in here at the ground. As Steve Waugh picks up a single. The football ground, as they call it here, which is the rugby league ground in our terms, is the home of the Leeds rugby league team. Just at the back there of the stands, and you will see the lights there at the Leeds Rugby League ground. It's back on the offside now with uh, Steve War on strike. Well run. That'll be a boundary to Steve War. Not off the middle of the bat, but he'll take him. That takes him along to 142. He's gone past Mark Taylor, who made 136 earlier. He's also gone past Bill Woodfall, who made 141 in 1926 at this ground. Well, there's an inside edge, but I think Dennis Lilly's comment 10 minutes ago was quite right about these heading lead feats. Uh, Australia have got such a big total, but all the time, you've always felt that the odd ball, they've played and missed or edged, of the batsman, and there's always been just that little bit of something in it for the bowler, just to encourage them. It's also quite amazing in Test cricket how the team that's batting first and build up a big total will get lucky breaks like the one you just saw. Steve Waugh, inside edge, down to fine leg four. The side who's been out there in the field for a day and three quarters, they go out, someone gets an inside edge, and bang, it goes onto the stumps. That's right, and I think that's where Australia have got to do what Dennis Lillis said, is ball straight, I know they've got to be aggressive, but fairly straight, tight, get the pressure on England, not let England batsmen get away to a flying start, plenty of runs rushing around, and keep the pressure on them for an hour or two. I mean, ideally, they'd like to get a wicket or two this evening. And in the uh, 28th over to Pringle, and for Newport, it was in the 28th over as well. Steve Waugh retains the strike. It's six for 520. Kim Barnett continues, bowling to Steve Waugh. That's a nice little gift from Kim Barnett, a full toss. And that takes Steve Waugh to within two of his 150. Murph Hughes is on 35, and uh, Australia now 6 for 524. That'll delight our next two commentators, the side of that scoreboard. 6 for 524 to Australia. That'll thrill Bob Willis and Tony Gregg. You reckon, do you? There's plenty of cricket left in this test match and this series. Isn't that not so, Mr Willis? That's right, Tony. Maybe first blood to Australia, but uh, it's not all over yet. not a bad little leg spinner, Kim Bonnet. I'm quite surprised having seen him bowl for the first time that uh, Guy didn't try him a little earlier on. Yes, David should have given him a go yesterday when they got stuck against uh, Border and Taylor. He's played that one into the gap and we'll have to keep an eye on the... It's on 149. Merv Hughes, his partner, the non-striker's end. Philip De Freitas will be the bowler from the Rugby League football stand -in. 149 not out. And watchfully played to Gower. One forty nine represents the eighth highest score made by an Australian on this ground. Holding the gloves up there. Perhaps uh, there's either a message going out. Straight to the backward point.
Philip de Freitas in his 41st over. Two for 113 at the start of this one. Foster 43 overs, two for 100. Newport 36 overs, two for 139. Pringle 33 overs, no wicket for 123. And the two occasional bowlers, Gooch six overs for 20, and Barnett has bowled three overs for 19. Loves this might be one of those little messages from the captain. Into the gap it goes, and that's 150 for Stephen Waugh. A tremendous innings, a quick time innings, an innings made when it really mattered, and he should be very satisfied with his performance here today. Quite quickly, he's um, managed to put on 86 for the seventh wicket with Stephen Waugh. A long way from his uh, early days as a number 11 for Australia. Really come good with the bat. And he's uh, scored his 35 with consummate ease. Kim Barnett trying a new approach. Coming round the wicket to Steve Waugh. So we try to uh, clip the edge of the rough down that end. Pringle in particular was uh, encroaching upon them the wicket area. Gower back to his position now an extra cover and still no movement amongst the uh, ranks the Australian dressing room. That's played into the gap on the offside just one. This board has been sitting there for quite a long while now watching this partnership and uh, we most most of us thought that he made a clear in fact going back half an hour now around about 10 to 5 and give his bowlers an hour to uh, Try and get rid of uh, one or two of the England trouble. But I suspect, Bob, tomorrow, the story might be just a little bit different. Yeah, those long knives will be sharpening up for David Gower. His uh, honeymoon's over. It's his... Uh, he had one divorce with Peter May when uh, he was chairman of selectors, and Ted Dexter, the new chairman, has brought him back. And uh, the press full of the joys of Dexter and Gower. I wonder if... Uh, tomorrow morning's papers and probably more pointedly even still Sunday's tabloids whether they will really chew them up yes, those uh, Sunday newspapers tend to um, have a little bit of time to develop the theory a bit and uh, of course there'll be another day's play and so David Gower I would have thought I want to have a nice quiet rest day without reading too many newspapers. There is, of course, a rest day in this test match. Australian viewers not very used to those. Sunday is a rest day in this test match. David Gower has the uh, auspicious pleasure of doing a press conference. Quick single, Wall gets through comfortably. He moves on to 152. Watchfully forward goes War, and he remains 152, not out at six for 531. So just two to go in this over now. War on strike, and once again finding the gap. This time he's looking for two, but I think he'll probably have to settle for one. Hughes. Nine. A big score here by the Australians. Gower at the moment is um, having a little team talk with De Freitas. And uh, the Aussies have got their heads together. There are some good explanations for it. We'll just have a look at uh, Philip De Freitas now. Stephen War is uh, the batsman taking strike. He's batting at the Kirks to late end. Yeah, I... Uh, would have uh, declared around about five o'clock, the same as uh, many of the armchair critics back in Australia might have done. But I can see why Border wouldn't. It's looking pretty easy out there. And uh, the time to make the runs might well be in the first innings out there, rather than the Australians have to go out and try and make them in the second if they're chasing uh, a total, having bowled England out twice. They have a formidable target at the moment. 
539 on the board and only six wickets down. These two guys are making things look uh, pretty simple. Stephen War is batting quite beautifully, playing some lovely strokes away on the offside. And Merv Hughes is hitting well. He's a very good partner there. Comfortable on their balcony. Hughes has 54, War has 154. The sun is shining and uh, everything looks pretty rosy. It's all happening for Australia. 100 partnership between War and Hughes. Merv Hughes' his own 50 and now the 550 up for Australia. So Kim find it again. And he loves those short deliveries outside off stump. That's going to run down to the boundary. That area is very quick on this ground. It's a little bit of a slope down there. And the rank long hop, like that one, is uh, really no problems at all for war in uh, any circumstances. But when he's got 158, I should think it's uh, very, very easy for him. And uh, this really is an indication that war and indeed border there she goes again but on that occasion he plays and misses yes that border is perhaps thinking runs are coming so easily they may as well take advantage of it neither of them have had to go mad and throw the bat Barnett just coming round the wicket trying to bowl into those bowlers foot marks outside war's leg stump but so so, so far without any success He's trying to flick the edge of the rough patch uh, just in front of War down that uh, end. It uh, really is pretty well pitched up and there's no real problem at the moment for War. He's got 158. Hughes has 54. It's quite a tidy delivery. Well, just 25 minutes, 24 minutes in fact. It's play left this evening. So the end of another over. Six for 550. Uh, it's up in Yorkshire. Umpire David Shepherd is uh, very superstitious. The score on 555. He's jumping around. Six wickets down for Australia. War 136. Now on board of 66, the main scorers. But really, it's been a good team effort. The top batsman you've got six top order batsmen and four of them getting good scores Gooch and I've got a gut feeling that Alan Border will bat on tomorrow morning as well maybe for half an hour keep the pressure right on the Englishman frustrate the batsman and then go all out for a victory it's a long time since Australia have been six for 556 in a test match. Steve War still very watchful. It's been an absolutely superb innings and we're going to see a lot more of these types of innings from Stephen War in the future. A short single and Big Merv's a bit late. He's safely home. We haven't seen the stumps when the pressure's been on the Englishman today. Gow rushing in from short cover. Moves to 160. 161, in fact. That passes Peter Burge, who made a match winning 160 in 1964 when Bobby Simpson was captain of the Australian 11. So Stephen War not out 161 Hughes not out 66 for 563 that outside edge just beating the slip field of Pringle and racing away for two PJ Birds was one of the all-time great batsmen in my opinion really great middle order batsman and now Stephen Moore has passed his 160 scored on this ground this time he hits it through mid with great shot racing away the outfield's fast Foster putting in the big ones, but he won't make it. Four more. A lovely shot from Stephen Moore. We've seen a lot of boundaries come through that mid-wicket region today. There's another one. 
Newport sliding into his pads. Beautiful timing. Head over the ball. Races away for four. I'm sure David Gow at the moment is thinking of the 1985 Test match at Edgbaston against Australia when England declared their first innings close at five for 595. I'm sure that's very firm in Alan Border's mind and back memories to David Gower. The great thing is that it's happening to the other captain this time in the other country and Australia are holding the trump card. And Stephen Moore has struck 23 boundaries here at Headingley. Most of them full blooded square drives or deflections off the pads. One or two vicious square cuts. His first hundred, what a great hundred, deep breath there. He's a very fit athlete. He's looking towards stumps, some 12 minutes to the stumps position. That's going to race away. The freight just comes around quickly. War back quickly for the second run. Good running. The throw just a fraction wide. And War safely home. The crowd's staying right to the end here at Headingley. They've seen a great innings. They've seen Boycott, Boycott make his hundredth first class hundred on this ground. They've seen a wonderful first up hundred by Mark Taylor, 136. Now Stephen War not out 167. It's a massacre and it's a great batting performance. Well, wicket that is enabling the batsmen to play their shots. Let's quite get that straight to mid-off. The ground feeling has been pretty good by the Englishmen. They've stuck at the task. They've done one or two catches. Particularly one that Barnett dropped Jones at square leg that should have been taken. But all in all, the fielding of a reasonable standard. Two days in the field. Conditions very cool. But the bowlers have really taken a pasting. That's the over bowled. Six for five, six nine. Six for 572. Merv Hughes, 63. Steve War on strike, 167. Graham Gooch, the bowler. David Gow looking for a, a little bit of a miracle here. Great concentration by Stephen War, as well as his stroke play. He's run very hard between the wickets. Jones and War were very busy. A wonderful partnership of 138. This partnership now worth 132. That's a wonderful effort by Mervyn Hughes. Promoted in the batting order. Giving more great support. Certainly is, and it's, it's hot work out there for the big fella. War, crunch, way it goes. Four more. Beautifully played. Oh, we're running out of things to say about this innings of Stephen Wars. Running out of things to say about this stroke off the back foot a magnificent stroke it's been playing them all day piercing the field Graham Gooch unable to stop that ball beating the third man and the forward point to the boundary for four runs highlight of this innings stroke play through the square Steve Waugh on 172. So Donald Bradman scored 173 not out in 1948. So one run behind the, the great Donald Bradman, Stephen Waugh. Bill Ponch scored 181 in 1934. Arthur Morris 182 in 1948. So Donald Bradman 304 in 1934 and 334 in 1930. So Stephen Waugh 172. Stephen Moore came to the wicket at 12.15. It's been a superb innings. Six for 577. Sitting home in front of the gas heater or the wood fire, I'll be sitting back saying how sweet it is. 
Hughes, 63, War 172. The early hours of the morning in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth. I'm sure we're all sitting up watching this magnificent Australian batting effort. Well, the highest score ever by an Australian side was 584 in 1934 at Headingley. We're talking about the scores at this ground, this great ground at Yorkshire. Look at an outside edge there. So they're only seven runs short of that highest ever task. Missiles in this final over at six for 578. They look for a single. Hughes struggling, but Gow missed fields. Balls. Fine innings by Joan. A partnership of 138 with Stephen War. And the last wicket to fall was wicketkeeper Healy. It was six for 441. It's now six for 580. Stephen War pushing the ball back. What a wonderful day's play for the Australian 11. Sent into bat by David Gower yesterday morning in very dull and overcast conditions. They put on 44 for the first wicket. They were two for 57 when David Boone was caught behind. Since then, it's been all Australia. Pushes forward. That's the over bowl. So at the end of the second day's play in the first test match, Australia are six for 580. A wonderful performance by the Australian batsman. A magnificent innings by Stephen Waugh. Not out, 174. One run more than Sir Donald Bradman scored here on the famous ground in Leeds. A wonderful performance. Mervyn Hughes, great support. Not out, 63. Jones out for 79. Healy for 16. And don't forget Mark Waugh. A magnificent 100 by the opener. He was out for 136. And a wonderful ovation for Stephen Moore. You won't see a better century on any ground, anywhere in the world in Test cricket. The end of his first and a wonderful Test 100. David Gower leads the tidings went off. So at the end of today's play, Australia are six for 580. A wonderful performance and the bowlers, they took some punishment. Defratus, two for 128. Foster, two for 100. Newport, two for 153. What a debut against Australia. Pringle, no wicket for 123. Gooch, no wicket for 31. Barnett, no wicket for 33 off six. So a wonderful day for Australian cricket and Alan Border. We've hoped you enjoyed this telecast from Henningley. We look forward to see you tomorrow. So it's goodbye from us all. Welcome back. To